Okay, welcome everyone. Waiting for everybody else to join in. Wait for a minute. Anybody has any doubt in whatever questions you might have solved? No one? Okay. Your UTs are going on or it's over? It's going on. Which one is tomorrow? Sir, nothing. Sir, Monday, sir. Hmm. One day. Okay. All right. So I guess we should start now. Others will probably join. Meanwhile. Fine. So uh, you know that uh, modern physics is over now. All right. We are done with the entire modern physics and uh, very important section: nuclei, dual nature, atoms. All those chapters are very simple, easy to score, and that's why it is very, very important. Okay, so we are done with that, and we are getting into uh, this chapter which we had left earlier. This chapter name is magnetism and matter. Okay, so this is what we will be studying today, and today we will be done with the uh, done with. This chapter, and then uh, I will require maybe one or one and a half more classes to complete the entire syllabus. Okay, so in next uh, maybe another one or two classes, physics curriculum is going to get over. Okay, so make sure that uh, you know whatever we are doing towards the end, be it modern physics, magnetism and matter, or communication system. and em wave all those chapters you must do very very uh, properly because uh, we may not get time to you know revise that too much who is this raju who is raju sir it's me rajdeep tu raju hai ghar ghar ka naam tera raju hai yeah actually Call you Raju. Okay. Okay, call me. No, they call you Raju. Yes, sir. My, uh, my mom calls me Raju. Acha. Okay. ठीक है. So, fine. So that's Rajdeep. Anyways, so we are going to start this chapter today. We are going to complete it also today only because it's a simple and a small chapter. Okay. Let us proceed. write down kartik mute magnetism and matter yes we'll later on so uh, in this chapter we are going to discuss about magnetism due to the material like permanent magnets 
okay and we are going to discuss uh, how these material will behave when they are put under the external magnetic field okay so these are the two things that we are going to discuss very similar to a moving charges and magnetism scenario in which our focus was a uh, magnetic field due to the current and what happens to the current if it is inside already existing magnetic field similarly here magnetic field due to the matter and what will happen if the matter is kept in already existing magnetic field okay so these things we are going to discuss in this particular chapter and uh, naturally you might be knowing it and uh, it is quite obvious that the first time the magnetism was discovered was not from the current okay so magnetism was discovered first uh, in the form of matter's magnetic field as in there will be some material which has its own magnetic field that got discovered in greece a place called magnesia long long back okay so people i think we have already uh, you know talked about it but then just i'll repeat it again so these guys were uh, they they used to wear the uh, wooden shoes and their uh, soles lot of nails were there so they could not walk uh, very easily on the floor of particular place so later on they found out that the place is attracting the nail and it has some mysterious property which is what we are calling magnetism okay so because of the magnetic field of the floor it is attracting the shoe so hence they used to get tired very soon and then they discovered that these are some special kind of rocks which are having magnetic property and the first thing they do is they started worshiping it thinking that it's god so they have uh, that is how it all started and uh, it was very precious at that time when it got discovered these uh, stones were considered to be very very unique precious so the ladies used to wear jewelry made up of magnets thinking that's unique and very uh, very very you know in unique property but then later on of course it was well known uh, later on that uh, it is abundantly available most of the places so that there it loses the importance wherein all the superstitious belief uh, were gone based on it but then uh, you know no nobody thought of any proper systematic or scientific usage of the magnet which was discovered okay it was uh, you know very very late uh, when people thought of a proper usage of the bar magnet what what do you think that usage is anyone heavy iron object so for the compass 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 okay navigation okay for the navigation purpose fine so how people are using for uh, navigate navigation purposes what happens is that when you i mean it was found out very quickly it was found out that if you hang a piece of bar magnet with a thread like this which is which enables the bar magnet to freely rotate okay so the bar magnet is free to rotate about this axis every time they found out that this portion this end is always aligning in a unique direction and this automatically so whichever direction suppose this direction is north so they will write north on this end and south on that end so wherever you go however it is as in you can uh, give it some you can have some disturbance you can rotate it randomly but when it stops 
it will always align in a unique manner so you will know where is your north and south and then you can easily find out where is your east and west so you just need one direction other directions will be very easily found out okay for example if you stand uh, facing the east uh, your back side will be west what will be your right hand side south south okay so uh, you know it was used for navigation purposes and uh, the thing is that when we are sitting at home we know the direction we know uh, you know which direction is east which direction is south and north but then when you are in a ship okay or in a barren land wherein uh, you don't see uh, the maybe in the night time okay it becomes extremely difficult to find out which direction is north which direction is south like that okay so before the compass came in people used to have star gazing for the navigation purposes have you heard of star gazing the constellation not the constellation actually but have you heard of star gazing yes using, using stars for navigation like you look at the pole star and that will be the south direction always okay so there are few stars which are very very far away for them entire solar system is just a point okay so it doesn't matter where the earth moves how it is rotating it doesn't even matter to those stars so relatively the star location is fixed so if you can look at a particular star and if you know that the star is in the south direction whose position won't be changing so you can find out which direction is south which direction is north east west okay so this was a very popular way of navigating in the sea but then of course it has its own limitation right it is very easy to misjudge the direction probably this way you are looking at the star maybe slightly this way the star is so rather than going this way you are tilted by 10 degrees so you will end up going somewhere else if star gazing is this way Uh, the actual star is in this way but then you are gazing in this direction but anyways it was at least it gave some idea about it the another limitation was that uh, during the cloudy weathers okay it was very difficult to use the star navigation and hence there uh, this particular discovery that you can use the magnet for navigation purpose was a game changer during that time okay in fact uh, there was this chinese uh, emperor uh, which whom many are tell many tell stories of so what they used to do is that they have a chariot like this they designed a chariot okay on top of the chariot there is you can put a man like this i mean not the living man just a small uh, this thing statue of the man and you can put a magnet over in this direction put an arrow like that and this thing is able to rotate freely about this axis so whichever direction the hand points to that will be a definite direction maybe a north direction so on a chariot moving chariot on a run time you can find out which direction the uh, the north and south is and then you have your bow and arrow and you you can accordingly you know target your enemies now uh, this thing is basically utilized in a low visibility areas wherein for example during late night wherein uh, the light or the visibility is very less okay or maybe in a foggy situation when uh, the visibility is very less then the the enemy will basically take the rest camp or the enemy might be moving very very slowly but if you have a navigation device like this you can move very fast and attack your enemy from various directions and you can win wars and that is how uh, the stories regarding chinese emperor winning many wars uh, you know was like that and this a uh, chinese emperor called this guy who has created this kind of chariot this guy is called as craftsman of course it was not uh, uh, in english he he might have meant it in chinese the literal trans translation of that is craftsman 
and later on this craftsmen they are called engineers which is what you guys will be if you go and do your engineering okay so this is just a brief of how the magnetism got evolved but then you know this was the only uh, usage of magnetism for a very very long time so only in past 300 to 400 or maybe 2 to 300 years ago only people have understood that uh, magnetism can be utilized or magnetism already exists in various facets of their lives Okay, so then they started recognizing it and more and more importance magnetism has gained and the importance of magnetism now is no less than the importance of the current or electricity. Okay, you can for uh, you can you cannot think of any uh, instrument without the any uh, let's say uh, instrument. Uh, without magnetism for example anything that rotates has a motor in it inside the motor there will be a magnet okay then uh, you have your ac generator generation of the current itself is when you current the magnetic energy you when you convert the magnetic energy into uh, the electrical energy or you utilize it to create electricity out of it so there is various like the medical devices also MRIs and stuff all those they uh, they utilize the magnetism to analyze various things so now to I mean you cannot imagine your life without a magnetism you right now you are attending classes the uh, the, the memory of the uh, laptop or your mobile phone all those memories uh, hard disk and everything is made up of a magnetic property of the matter only okay so hence that's the reason why we are studying this chapter and we should know the basics of it at least in class 12th okay so like i said uh, this was very very uh, well known that magnetism exists and for thousands of years nobody has uh, this idea of how to utilize it but then based on their experiences they have understood few things about the magnetism so which we will not debate in the chapter we will take it as it is okay we will be taking these things as facts fine so write down commonly known ideas regarding magnetism again this chapter is like a semiconductor chapter okay there will be a theoretical stuff mainly in this chapter That is the reason why I was avoiding this chapter. <laughs> this chapter is not in the J advanced. Okay, at, at least for many years J advanced, it was not there. This year, not sure whether they will keep it or not. You have to check it, but it was not there for long. Okay, somebody is asking, did our seniors write J mains that happening now? Yeah, your seniors are writing it definitely they are writing it the uh, i think yesterday first shift shreya one of our students she wrote her comment was that uh, maths came easy chemistry was mainly inorganic chemistry she said and physics was uh, more of uh, calculation based that that is what she said it took time at least those numeric times numeric types it took time because uh, it was having a lot of calculations. That is what uh, she said. Okay. So yeah, J is exam of elimination. They are trying to eliminate you. They are not trying to test you. Okay, fine. How much you know? How much you don't know? Okay. Anyways, commonly known ideas regarding magnetism. Write down the first one. Is earth when, when i say j i mean neat also I, is there anyone who is writing neat kritika is writing neat, neat that i know anybody else sai sai kritika rajdeep and and uh, who else anush sai kritika rajdeep anush okay write down earth behaves uh, 
earth behaves like a magnet okay that was established where the magnetic field magnetic field pointing approximately to geographic south to geographic north now do you know what is geographic south and north what it is anyone has any idea so like the magnetic north attracts the wow. geographic south okay that like is when... others how geographic south and north are defined anybody else geographic north is like the north pole geographic south is antarctica are tumne ye geography nahi padhi kya bilkul so that's uh, isn't that it sir i mean it could be that but how it is defined you just explained it what it is but then no you are not getting it what i am asking i am asking how it is so defined it's both of the points in ah, the earth i got it yes this is what i was looking for so if this is the axis of rotation of the earth okay your north and south pole is one top point and one down point so one of the point is assumed to be top that you can call north and this is south this is geographic so ng sg you can say okay of course you can debate that the axis of the earth is tilted fine it is tilted but i have not made it tilted okay let me put it straight like this okay this is geographic north geographic south okay so now basically the first point uh, is pointing towards a fact that the earth behaves like a magnet and a bar magnet okay as if there is a bar magnet inside the earth all right and it may sound funny but it is true that in earlier days people used to think that there is a bar magnet hidden inside the earth okay a giant bar magnet but they never found it because it never existed so there is an angle between the magnetic north and magnetic south this is this you can say nm this is sm magnetic north and south fine but approximately for practical purpose you can say both of them coincide fine and uh, there was one more thing i wanted to ha huh. so the uh, the magnetism of the earth okay magnetic field of the earth is such that as if there is a bar magnet inside and this magnetic field of the earth is something which is very important for the human lives okay if it doesn't exist then the uh, lot of harmful radiation from the sun will be reaching the earth and destroy the uh, this thing destroy the living organisms and everything so you can see earth magnetism i'll just show you no why it is taking so much time ah look at this i mean this is just artistic impression of what it is actually see this is the earth magnetic field trying to repel the uh, harmful radiations okay exactly what kind of harmful radiation how the repulsion happen and everything i am not getting into all that i am just showing it to you that the magnetic field of the earth which is there it is helping us protect the life in it okay so every planet has a magnetic field and jupiter has the strongest magnetic field and the weirdest magnetic field also so jupiter if you read the magnetic field of the jupiter it's very unique i forgot actually what it is what is a unique thing and look at this look at this this is a geographic north pole geographic south pole and this is the dotted line is the axis 
the angle between magnetic north south and the geographic is 11.5 degrees right now and this angle is changing and this angle is also very finely balanced there there are some benefits because of this angle if this angle changes the some disturbance will be there okay and yes slowly and slowly it is changing how how do we measure this angle exactly i mean you just check the magnetic field lines identify how it is it is exactly like this okay then you find out okay fine where is north and south pole okay it is based on observation there is no formula or concept as such here they just observe it and uh, yes of course there is no bar magnet inside the earth so from where the magnetic field is coming from nobody has a proper answer to that okay the most convincing answer yet is that the uh, the molten iron is there inside the earth which has the the ions which are moving and when ions are moving inside the core that movement of ions is like the current and that current will have some magnetic field so that is the explanation of the uh, i mean just it is an approximate explanation nobody exactly can explain exactly how it is similar to a bar magnet embedded inside the earth like that okay but yeah second point is write down if we suspend which test you had today the computer bio okay it is not that all nps have the same test right if different nps have different test yes sir if we suspend a bar magnet in air it will orient it will orient itself in north south direction it is obvious isn't it it is obvious that this will happen because earth behaves like a giant bar magnet so if you suspend a magnet let's say this is your magnet just give me a second guys there is someone at door just give me one second guys one second okay sorry about that yeah so what i was saying was that if you suspend a bar magnet like this okay which direction the north pole of the magnet will orient itself suppose is a north pole of the magnet which direction it will orient towards south or north towards the south right because north pole will attract the south so whichever is a north pole typically s is written written on it so that you will understand that it will show the south direction okay and whatever is a south pole of the magnet on that north is written okay so that you understand it has oriented towards the north direction all right third point write down i mean these are obvious even you have experienced it 
north and north south and south they will ripple okay and north and south poles they will attract so like poles ripple unlike will attract fine just uh, like the charges ah like a charges but the story of magnetism starts from dipole can you separate north and south pole rajdeep no sir no we said we did last time magnetism is about dipoles monopoles don't exist okay they don't fourth is the same point the point is we cannot write down we can't separate north and south pole if there is a north pole there will be a south pole can, can you think of the simplest of the dipole simplest dipole that exist in the nature no one hydrogen atoms electron do you have learned it right magnetron magnetron name have you heard of it yes so electron revolving in a circle one side will be south other side will be north pole okay that is the simplest magnet or the basic uh, the thing that exists in nature even that has both north and south pole so that's the reason okay and the fifth point is that it is possible to create a magnet okay like uh, you know uh, for charges it was not possible to uh, create or destroy the charges right but then over here it is possible to create magnetic magnets possible to create magnets out of iron and its ore okay so these are the uh, commonly accepted things as a fact and we will not debate on it we will be accepting yes this is what happens okay we will not debate why north north ripple north south attract you never asked why positive and negative charge will attract right same way here also these are the facts now let us proceed so in case of uh, the uh, this thing in case of uh, moving charges and magnetism we had bio sawa law which has given us a very powerful equation which is this m not by 4 pi i dl cross r unit vector divided by distance square okay this idl is the uh, current element okay now this formula even though it is uh, very useful and you can find out the magnetic field uh, due to various uh, current elements and try to integrate and get it for the wire a circular wire for the uh, so, you know different shapes as in circular straight wire and finite wire infinite wire part of the circle okay all those things we have done while integrating this we have found out those okay but then the basic thing okay basic thing in magnetism is dipole moment m okay so our idea here should be that can i find the magnetic field can i find the function can i find a function which will give me magnetic field in terms of m okay if i get magnetic field in terms of m then my m can be due to anything okay it does not matter i'll just substitute the value of m and i'll get the answer because m is the most basic thing in magnetism so i can you know there are experiments 
experimentally you can find out m easily and more so over for example a permanent magnet how can you use this particular definition for permanent magnets in permanent magnet what you will substitute i as what is dl okay so this formula you cannot hope to use in a permanent magnet setup so that's the reason why we will be trying to find out magnetic field in terms of m so that i can get the value of m for a permanent magnet and substitute that value over here and experimentally it is very easy to find m why you might have learned this formula torque is equal to m cross b you have seen it before or not yes so experimentally you can have a device which could measure the torque value and magnetic field you will get the value of m okay using this expression so get the value of m that m can be from bar magnet or could be anything could be from a wire which has current or anything as long as you know the value of m you can use that formula because that is a basic formula so we are now trying to find out the magnetic field in terms of m okay now first thing that will come on our mind is a bar magnet right so we will try to find out magnetic field of a bar magnet in terms of m now what i am trying to do over here i should make it very clear that what is known to us what is known to us i am trying to correlate with what is unknown okay so basically what is known to me magnetic field because of the solenoid magnetic field because of the uh, circular wire magnetic field due to a straight wire all these things we have already derived and we will be treating as if we know it okay so can i use the formula of something which i already know modify that formula and make it appear as if it is in terms of m this is what we are trying to do but before we do that for a bar magnet i need to understand a similar scenario as in is there a scenario in which the current and wire is there which will create similar magnetic field as that of bar magnet can you tell me which scenario creates similar magnetic field as that of bar magnet so solenoid solenoid right so write down solenoid has a similar magnetic field similar looking magnetic field as that of bar magnet okay so what we will do is that we will we will try to find magnetic field of a solenoid as a function of m okay then this m can be due to a bar magnet also okay it is like you are trying to find acceleration in terms of force force is equal to mass m acceleration and that force could be any force could be spring force or a tension force could be from friction could be anywhere as long as net force is 10 newton is does not matter from where this 10 newton is coming from it will create same acceleration okay same thing here also we are trying to find in terms of m and then that m can be from anything okay so let us first uh, you know just to revisit can you draw the magnetic field due to a solenoid draw a small solenoid and just quickly draw the magnetic field because of it
Will it be like this? Do you remember? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It will be like this, sir. Okay. It looks like a bar magnet. Bar magnets, magnetic field. Okay. So let us draw this and find out the magnetic field in terms of M. Okay. So just to make sure there is, uh, you know, clarity in the picture or drawing, we will be representing solenoid as a cylinder. So draw a small cylinder like this, all of you. Fine, so this is the axis of the solenoid. And when we talk about a bar magnet, usually we talk about the magnetic field of a bar magnet in front of its pole, right? So that is why our interest is to find out the magnetic field along the axis at a point P, let's say this is the point P, which is at a distance of R from the center of the solenoid. I'll draw a center line also. This distance is R. Okay. And the radius of the solenoid is given to me. This radius is A. Okay. The length of the solenoid is also given. Total length is 2L. So this is L, this is L. Okay. Of course it is a solenoid. So other things are also given. Number of turns per unit length is N. Current is I. Current in the solenoid is I. Okay. Now tell me, uh, how will you proceed to find out magnetic field at a point P due to the entire solenoid? Any guesses? No one. So you can just take one like ring and you can say that this is just rings going from this side to this side. Ah, so you'll take a ring like this, right? Yes. Take a ring like this. Degree. Rings thickness is dx. Okay, you're taking a ring like this whose thickness is dx. And since we are measuring all the distances from the uh, center only, so I'll keep X this only. From the center, this is your X. This thickness is DX. Okay, this is DX. Now, do you remember the formula for magnetic field due to the ring along the axis? What was it? So, mu naught ni r square by 2 and into x square by 2 into x square plus r square to the power 3 by 2 okay where x is what so the distance to the point okay you can do it as y because you can you may confuse x from here to there ha huh. now tell me what is the magnetic field due to this thin ring db is what 
write down first all of you write down and then you can tell once you're done let me know Done. Okay, Ruchir Singh is done. Others? Akanja, you were absent last class. Make sure you go through the videos. Drew everything fine. Okay. One of my relative also got Corona now. He is in Bombay. He traveled, came back with Corona. Okay, DB. DB is mu naught and number of turns will be what? N, N into DX. N DX. N is number of turns per unit length. Capital N is N into DX. That I into R is A. So A square divided by 2 times of R is A square y is what what should i write instead of y r minus x l minus uh, yeah, yeah l minus x what r minus x yeah r minus x param is confusing me sorry sir this okay now do you remember in the case of uh, electrostatic dipole we had assumed that the distance between the two poles is very less compared to wherever we are finding the electric field. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay. Because we were dealing with small, small dipoles. Like, for example, the dipoles because of HCl molecule and so on and so forth. Here also, we are going to assume that we are dealing with small bar magnets or you are dealing with, let's say, uh, one electrons dipole fine so we can assume that the uh, length l is very less compared to sorry it should be opposite r is very large compared to l as well as the radius a okay so this is the thing that we are going to assume over here similar thing we have assumed in the electrostatic dipole also fine so you will get total magnetic field by integrating this, right? Your limits will be for x. From where to where you will integrate? Minus a to a. Yep. Minus l by 2. L. Minus l2 plus l. Yeah, minus l. Param, you are getting very innovative doing silly errors. No, sir. I thought he was that thing. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You get innovative. Okay, so... Don't start assuming things. Look at the facts you should not assume. I mean, so you only again know length is my radius. That is what I thought. That is, it will destroy you in the test which you write. Okay, so tell me if R is very large compared to L and A, can I say X is negligible in terms of R, no matter how it is changing? Can I write R minus X as R only? Yes. Sir. Right. I can do that. So it will become A square plus R square. Right. Then even A is very less compared to R. Then A square plus R square, can, it, can I say it become R square only? Yes. Sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. So it will become N D X. 
current into a square divided by denominator will be what then two times param what it will be r cube sorry r cube integral minus l to plus l okay now only variable left is dx so that you will integrate how much dx will become when you integrate 2l 2l right this will be equal to aviram zone mein aa raha hai n into 2l pi n i a square divided by 2 r cube now this is your magnetic field b i want you to modify this and write this magnetic field in terms of dipole moment of the solenoid do it okay i can see some of you got it param what is your answer did you get it u not by pi r cube into m okay so you multiply and divide by pi right yet yeah, you have to do so that denominator will become like this n to l i pi a square divided by 2 r cube now n into 2l is what number of turns this is n i into a right can i say this is my dipole moment n i a that's a definition of dipole moment right for a current loop this can be written as mu not by 4 pi into 2m by r cube anyone has any doubt clear to everyone yes sir so this is your actual magnetic field actual magnetic field due to a magnetic dipole okay now we are going to see something very interesting interesting to me i don't know how much interesting it is to you so magnetic field along the axis is mu not by 4 pi into 2 m by the way is this chapter done in your school no sir what are they doing so we're just finishing up uh, questions of moving charges so am i ahead very very far or little bit ahead only quite far right oh so i can as well cancel this very far still i'll be ahead okay but i won't do it this is the magnetic field in terms of dipole moment the class 12 physics is very simple right compared to 11th it get over quickly and not many details are there as many as in 11th did you feel that way all, all of you yes sir so there is more details there is a lot more details in class 12th yes sir that you didn't pay attention so in 11th grade it was just like five equations everything on that 11th i am talking about 
if i collect all the numericals of 11th and all the numericals of 12th which one do you think is easy to master 12th hey 12th 12th param did not pay attention in 12th so that's why param is busy with something what is something that you are doing param nowadays practically used in the real world 12th physics is more practically used how can you say that have you seen electric field and magnetic field from your eyes ah uh, you can say that uh, these things are something which you can you have seen devices of in your lab but mechanics is something which you use in a, your day to day life you are so used to it that you start taking it for granted also devices yeah because your devices are mainly electrical instruments isn't it your devices in your uh, lab is mostly electrical or optical in nature so electrical device electrically rahega na usme so if you take let's say mechanical or civil then you see the mechanics the kind of mechanics you deal with there okay anyways this is axial magnetic field do you remember axial electric field due to a dipole how much it was formula do you remember? so the same was that 1 by 4 pi epsilon 2 pi by 1 by 4 pi epsilon not 2 pi 2 pi by r cube 2 pi by r cube similar looking okay we had derived the equatorial electric field also what was it 1 by 4 pi epsilon not into p by r cube minus p by r cube. minus p by r cube okay this is the equatorial electric field similarly i don't need to derive the equatorial magnetic field i can just correlate and it will be this minus m by r cube okay the electric dipole will go the direction of the electric dipole moment is from positive to nahi from negative to positive this is the direction of the electrical dipole moment what do you think the direction of the magnetic dipole moment is so not to south no ha ah, not to south no south to north what do you think others so south to north south to north this is your magnetic dipoles direction okay everything okay will be same m is a vector p is also a vector you have seen numericals in which uh, the dip electrical dipoles were added like vectors same thing can be there for a magnetic dipole also i can have a bar magnet like this okay curved bar magnet so you can divide it into different small small pieces and then vectorially add the net dipole moment i'm just telling you in numericals you may see something like that very similar to the way you're dealing with the electrical dipole magnetic dipole also you have to deal with it okay now again i'll just uh, tell you again uh, Uh, these things because i can sense some of you might have this confusion dekho m is represented by the arrow this arrow is m this arrow could represent solenoid this arrow could represent the bar magnet this arrow can represent the electron a current loop could be anything i don't care as long as m is m it doesn't matter from where it is coming okay now this line perpendicular to m this line is equatorial this line is axial axial i put another color blue line is the axial okay this is distance r this is the when you talk about the equatorial you measure the distance perpendicular to m vector when you measure the axial one you measure the along the vector distance r okay magnetic field uh, 
along the axial direction will be in the direction of M. It will be like this only. Magnetic field on the equatorial will be in opposite direction, like this. Getting it? Why opposite direction? There's a minus sign. Minus represents the direction in the case of vectors. Okay. Anyone has any doubts till now? Anyone? No one has any doubt? Okay, fine. Write down. Di since it boils down to a dipole, okay, let's discuss few more things about the dipole. So, dipole in a uniform magnetic field. How much time remain before you write your J-means? Have you do? You, are you aware of it? Five. Five. Right now, uh, four. September, four. September, October, November, December. Four months. <laughs> five months can't say five months. Four months, and uh, the even one month will be gone before you complete your class 12th. So after you're done with 12th, probably two and a half to three months will be remaining. Okay, so things have become very, very serious. All right, don't take this lightly. Two months is two to three months are around 60 to 80 days. And you are dealing with 140 chapters. 140 chapters, 80 days. I think it is not as easy as it you might be taking it okay so right now your top priority should be doing well in january j mains if you do well in january j mains you'll be very very relaxed okay suppose you get 99 or 98 percentile in january j mains itself imagine how much relaxed you will be okay you will not have a lot of worry going into the second phase of j mains so do yourself a favor and give your best shot in January J mains. Even though you might be lesser prepared, so are everybody else. So it's a relative ranking that matters. Anyways, I think I've repeated many times this thing. First thing is torque. A dipole moment of M experiences a torque of M cross B. Okay, very similar expression that of the electric dipole moment, which is P cross A. Okay. And you know the best part about these torques, these torques are couple. How the couple torque is different from any other torque? So about any point we can take will be the same. About anything about any uh, point you will have the same torque so the torque equal to i alpha equation is valid about the center of mass axis okay so same uh, torque will be about the center of mass also okay so you can equate this torque to i alpha easily fine now very similar you know situation over here uh, why i'm keep on repeating myself that for example, you remember you had, let's say electrical dipole moment like this. Okay, this is electrical dipole moment P and electric field is also like that E. If you rotate your uh, dipole moment little bit like this, what will happen to this electrical dipole moment P? It will try to go back or what? It will go back. It will try to go back. The direction is P cross E. So alpha direction is into the screen. So it goes inside. Okay. Very similar thing happens for the magnetic dipole moment also. So suppose this is the magnetic dipole moment. Red color. Here. 
this is the magnetic dipole moment okay so if you rotate it a bit like this where an external magnetic field is like this then again it will try to go back okay so whether it is magnetic dipole moment or electric dipole moment what they will do they will try to align in the direction of electric or magnetic field okay now the other situation torque is zero at what angles between magnetic dipole moment and magnetic field zero and 180 zero and 180 right torque equal to zero for an angle of zero and 180 degrees same thing over here also now net force to anyway is zero right so equilibrium net force is zero because we are talking about uniform magnetic field okay equilibrium implies that torque is also zero so even you know if angle is 180 degree then also it is in equilibrium only but do you remember what happened to the uh, electric dipole moment uh, when it was making an angle of 180 degrees with the electric field like this if you displace it slightly like this what will happen to it right to come to zero it will rotate like this it will just flip it over it will not go back okay so even though it is in equilibrium but then this is an unstable equilibrium and usually unstable equilibriums are the point of max potential energy the slope is slope of potential energy is zero but it is maximum there here also slope is zero but it is minimum over here and theta is zero so over there all as well if magnetic dipole moment makes 180 degree with the magnetic field and if it rotates little bit it will go back like that Okay. so this is also unstable equilibrium only fine no doubts right so theta equal to 0 and theta equal to 180 both are equilibrium but 0 is a stable one and 180 is unstable one okay then we need to define the potential energy also over here so change in potential energy is negative of the work done let's say okay not let's say this, this is the formula for the potential energy so magnetic potential energy can magnetic field do any work no sir but how come it is doing here dw is uh, integral of tau d theta how come it is doing work so it can't do work on any single particle like it That's can't right. do work on the electrons inside magnetic field cannot do work on a moving charge but it can do the work on dipoles okay so we are generalizing it in our head when we say that magnetic field doesn't do work that's not correct okay you take two magnets one magnet will attract the other magnet other magnet will gain the kinetic energy from where it gained the kinetic energy because the other magnet is doing work pulling it towards itself okay so we are trying to define the potential energy for that case so suppose it goes from theta 1 to theta 2 now when you're leaving it as it is when you rotate like that and you leave it the magnetic field will do the positive work or negative work what do you think it 
tries to go back magnetic field is doing positive work or negative work positive positive work right all of you yes sir it is doing positive work but what about d theta is it a positive quantity or negative quantity negative 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 so overall it is what mb sin theta d theta is a negative quantity work done should be positive so you multiply minus 1 with it so it will become plus outside this minus is in the formula so minus will come from here also this will be equal to mb integral of sin theta d theta theta 1 theta 2 okay when you integrate you will get delta u m magnetic potential energy is equal to minus of mb integral of sin theta is minus cos theta mb cos theta 2 minus cos theta 1 so u2 minus u1 is equal to minus of mb cos theta 2 minus of minus mb cos theta 1 can i say u2 is this and u1 is that this is u1 and this is u2 can i say that no so you can right i have already asked you such kind of questions before if 5 minus 3 is equal to 4 minus 2 5 doesn't become equal to 4 differences are equal individually they need not be equal okay so when theta 1 is 90 degree let's say take theta 1 to be 90 degree you will get uh, u2 minus potential energy when angle between magnetic field and dipole is 90 degree to be equal to minus of mb cos theta 2 then if we assume every time you define a potential energy you need to assume which one has the zero potential energy here if we assume u90 is zero when angle between the uh, magnetic field and the dipole if it is 90 degree we say potential energy is zero okay then the definition of potential energy is equal to minus of m dot b mb cos theta this is the magnetic potential energy no one has any doubt okay fine let us take few questions from your school textbook first one is this i love you let's say you have a magnet like this there is a magnetic field uniform magnetic field of b like that this is north and this is south okay what you did is that you have slightly tilted the magnet like that and then you have observed the movement of the magnet and it is found out that the magnet is doing shm okay magnet has started to do the shm it swings like this and then goes back like that you need to find out the time period of the shm time period of hm is what you have been given a magnetic dipole moment of the magnet m moment of inertia i do it
Oke. Okay. You know right how to deal with the angular SHM scenario? You rotate it by a small angle theta, then you look at the restoring torque and you have the direct formula with you, which is MB, M cross B, which is MB sin theta. This torque should be equal to I alpha and it is a restoring torque. It tries to go back. So minus sign will also be there. So alpha is equal to minus of MB by I into sine theta. Theta is very small, otherwise it will not remain a simple harmonic motion. It will be oscillation, but not simple. So if theta is very small, sine theta will be theta. Okay. So then you compare it with the angular SHM equation, omega square theta. So omega comes out to be root over MB by I. This is your omega. Okay. The time period is 2 pi by omega 2 pi root over i by mb. Okay, now using this relation, you can also determine magnetic field. You know, for sometimes time, time period is easy to calculate by stopwatch. Moment of inertia is suppose known to you and magnetic dipole moment is known. You want to find out b from this relation. So b will come out to be how much then? 4 pi square i divided by m into t square right so it, it can treat it like a relation this relation can be utilized to find the magnetic field as well as time period both but time period though you can calculate by using the uh, stopwatch as well this relation will be useful in calculating the magnetic field more than anything else Everybody understood? Anyone has any doubt? No one has any doubt? Okay. Okay. Kritika, you're writing? I'm still having the issue. You're not writing. So doctor said what? Till when? This will continue. Okay. J neat goes ahead. Okay, fine. Okay, I'll just uh, give you questions from your textbook right now. All right, let's take it one by one. You don't need figure here, okay? Find out. You may know exactly how to do it. Nobody cares about that. Get the right answer. That is what matter. Knowing, just knowing how to do it is not enough.
Okay, tell me the answer. Param got the answer, something he got. Param got something. What do you think, Param? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Good. So, no is one... it correct? No. You might hate it, but then I keep on reminding you that you are taking it lightly. <laughs> Calculations are very, very important in any exam like JE. Only Ruchir Parekh got it correct till now. Only one person. Rahul Mishra, close. Abiram. Abiram using calculator. Okay, the answer is no, Mahit, not that. I think uh, you guys are approximating. That is why close to the answer you're, you guys are getting. But let me tell you the final answer first. Answer is B equal to 0 0.01 Tesla. Okay. Now, I mean, do I need to show you how to get the answer? Magnetic field is 4 pi square i kata divided by m into t square. You can use this. If you don't remember it, you can derive it quickly. Not a problem. What is pi square equal to everyone? 10. 10, sir. 10. I'll keep it 10. as 10. Moment of inertia 7.5 into 10 s power minus 6 divided by what is m? m is what here? m, m, oh, 6.7 yes. 6 into 10 s power minus 2. Time period is how much? 0 0.67. 10 complete oscillation in 6.7 seconds. So one oscillation in 0 0.67. This is 0 0.67 square. Now I'll just show you quickly how to get the answer over here. So 4 into 7.5 divided by 6.7. 0 0.67 you can write it as 2 by 3. So it becomes 4 by 9 when you square it. 2 by 3 is 6.67, right? So that into 10 to the power minus 5 minus 2. So it becomes minus 3. Okay, then this 4 is gone. Then 7.5 divided by 6.7, slightly more than 1. When you multiply with 9, you'll get close to 10. Okay, so after this, you can look at the options also and get the correct answer. So roughly it is 10 into 10 to the power minus 3, which is 10 to the power minus 2, that is 0 0.01 Tesla. Everyone got their silly error? See, catching silly error won't help you because every time you'll make a new silly error, catching it will not help you at all. You need to just stop making silly errors by being more careful and respectful to the question. Okay. Here is your another chance to not to make silly error. Those who did not get the previous one, do this. See, questions from this chapter will be like this only in J also. That is the best part. It will be simple. When I say J, I automatically mean neat also. So, uh, what is G? G is Gauss. It's another unit of uh, magnetic field. One test for minus four Tesla. Yes, Rajdeep is smart. Tens of minus four Tesla. Okay, just like electron volt is a smaller unit of energy, you have a smaller unit of magnetic field also because one Tesla is huge. 
very, very large magnetic field one Tesla is. So what's the unit of magnetic moment? You tell me. Magnetic okay. moment is NIA, right? Current into area, ampere meter square. Okay, first part, first part, everybody should get it. Ruchir, that is wrong. M is equal to, is me though simple, hai na? torque is equal to MB sine theta. Torque is 0 0.016. This is equal to M, which we have to find out into B, that is 800 into 10 to the power minus 4. You have to convert in SI units. MB sine theta, which is 1 by 2. So from here, you'll get M as 0.4 Newton meter not Newton meter, what I'm saying, ampere meter square. Okay, B part, everyone. There are two Ruchers. When I say Ruchir got it correct, I could mean Ruchir Singh or Ruchir Parekh, both. Good to create some confusion also. B part, batao bhai, answer. Just tell me the B part right now. I don't care about the C part, okay? Okay, Ruchar Parekh got it. Kirtana G, KTG got it. Param, Pradyut. Okay, work done will be negative or positive? What do you think? Some of you are telling negative. Positive. Positive. Why positive? So because you're, you have to push it. You don't uh, need to stop it from moving. You have to push. You have to push it. So you have to do positive work. So work done is positive. That is clear. Okay. Pradyut understood. Yes, sir. My bad. I was thinking about the field. Okay. So work done is simply u two minus u one. Work done. Chaining cutting energy is zero. You are slowly moving it. It should be written. It should be written that it is slowly moving. Otherwise, you should write U2 plus K2 minus U1 plus K1. But it is not written. So we will assume changing cutting energy is zero. This is equal to uh, U2. U2 is equal to minus of U1. Uh, right? U2 is the most unstable position. So minus of M into B into cos of 180 degree 
that is m into b and u1 is minus of mb cos of 0 which is minus of m into b so u2 minus u1 is simply 2 times u1 2 times u2 which is 2 mb <laughs> 2 mb is 0 0.064 joules C part. So, Chir got it correct. Vigas Chaitanya Param Pradyut Raju. Okay, others? He also got it. What about Akansha? Akansha, Akshit, Advik, Mahit. Why are you keeping quiet? Hedwig Kritika also got it without writing anything and she got it correct. Oh, left hand, you're using left hand. Good. The bar magnet is replaced by a solenoid of this, uh, but same magnetic moment determine the current. Simple, enough. Eh, NIA is the magnetic dipole moment. Number of turns is 1000. Current is I. Area is 2 into 10 to the power minus 4. This should be equal to 0.4. So current will come out to be 2 amperes. Okay. Simple, straightforward. All right. There is a very nice table uh, which is there in your textbook which I wanted you to see how electrostatics and this thing is compared. This one. Look at the comparison here. Dipole moment, this constants of electrostatics, 1 by epsilon naught, and this is for mu naught for the magnetism. 4 pi is there in electrostatic as well as in magnetism. Then look at the other formulas energy, torque axial field, equatorial field, everything looks so similar, isn't it? So if you remember one formula, other formulas you automatically tend to remember. Okay, so like that you can uh, try to remember, you will not make silly errors then. Solve this question also.
okay see you just need to find one of the field other one is half or double of the other isn't it direction also changes though equatorial magnetic field will be half of the actual magnetic field ruchir hiya vikas nobody else param what do you think param correct sir won't comment this time yeah it's correct the moment you become humble about these numericals you stop making silly errors you should give them due respect that's all all right so axial magnetic field mu not by 4 pi is 10 to the power minus 7 into 2 into m 0.4 divided by r cube kaanga bhai r r is 50 cm so 0.5 cube why do you think length of a magnet is given to us any idea it has to say like it's much smaller than yes just to make a point here that you can use that formula which in which you have made a lot of approximations okay yes so axial magnetic field will be 6.4 into 10 to the power minus 7 tesla equatorial will be half of it isn't it look at the formula it will be half of it 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 7 tesla you have written only the magnitudes remember direction of axial is along the dipole moment direction of equatorial is against the direction of the dipole moment okay all right so this is the question from the book again which i like one of those questions do it yourself guys i mean the moment you refer to anything you're wasting time effort cheating yourself don't do all that do it yourself if you get it wrong that's fine one by one you answer answer for the first one which configuration is not in equilibrium 1 and 2 everybody okay so that's correct why it is 1 and 2 everyone theta is not 0 or 180 like it's 90 basically it's 90 so elect uh, the magnetic field due to uh, d2 p over q2 it is in which direction downwards 
here also downwards isn't it it's like this that's why solve the b part b part first one stable equilibrium which one stable equilibrium for stable equilibrium what should be theta zero zero, zero. where all it is zero is it zero at q3 no sir, it's 180. 180 at Q3. Q3 is down. Magnetic field is what? Which direction due to P? Oh, yeah. What? Says so downwards. It's downwards, it's downwards only. Oh, yeah. Downwards only. So Q3 is correct. What about Q5? What is the angle between Q5 and magnetic field? 180. 180. So that's not. What about over here? Q4. Which direction the magnetic field is? Downwards. Upwards. You, you have to think before you say something now. Okay. Magnetic field is along the axis when you talk about the axis. Axis is vertical. Over here, Q6, which direction it is? Up or down? Upward. Upward. Upwards. Okay. So clearly, Q3 and Q4, where the angle is zero. Okay, then unstable equilibrium, where angle should be 180. You can you can easily identify which one it is. Q5 and Q6, right? Q3. Q3 and six. Q3 and four and five are unstable. Three and six, and the other one Q5 and Q4. Four. Q4. Okay. C part. So the stable equilibrium. C part. Okay. Lowest potential energy means it should have a largest negative quantity, right? Angle should be zero only. Lowest potential energy angle should be zero or not. If angle is yes, sir. 180 degree, the potential energy become positive. It has to be negative. We are talking about lesser potential energy. So 180 degree is um, there are only couple of scenarios. One is this 180 degree. Other one is this. Which one out of two will have least potential energy? But both of them will have equal. What is the formula for potential energy? Minus of. No, wait. What I said. So it will be stable, right? Rukja. Yes. Rukja. Q3 and Q. Hold down. This and this. Now tell what you are saying. Chaitanya, you saying something? Nothing, sir. I was just saying that uh, it should be these ones, not. Okay, so out of these two, which one has the least potential energy? Minus of m dot b. Angle is zero, so it is minus of m b. Right. So m is same, but b is different. Whose b is more? 
B along Q6 is more or along Q3? Along so Q6 is more. So Q6 is the answer. Okay. So that's how you do this. Write down, next. Since we are talking about equivalence a lot, so let us discuss uh, the analog of the Gauss law also here. Okay, Gauss law was for the charges till now, isn't it? So let us try to see whether something like Gauss law can be there for the magnetism also. No, no, no. Ampere circuit law is not analogous to Gauss law. Did I say that during that time? Yes, sir. But when anybody has a question, do you have anything recorded? So we can check. <laughs> yeah, we can check. <laughs> Don't waste your time. I would not have told you that it is exact analog. I might have told you something similar to that. Okay, like that. Uh, we are talking about analog. Analog as in, uh, in Gauss law, we discuss about the electrostatic uh, flux, electric flux, fine. But did we find the flux in Ampere's law? No, sir. It was not a flux, it was a line integral. Flux is always through an enclosure. Okay. So, hmm. So we are going to find out, or we are going to discuss, can we find out a law related to magnetic flux? Okay. Magnetic flux will be defined exactly like how the electric flux is defined through a closed enclosure, which is B dot T. Now Gauss law, I hope you guys remember integral of E dot DA through an enclosure is equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. You remember this? Now, at the start, we have discussed the analog of a positive charge north. Okay, analog of a negative charge is south analog of a dipole is north south together okay so if i create a magnetic enclosure and find out the magnetic flux what do you think it should be equal to this should be equal to what so it should be zero why you need to have equal north and south Right, all of you agree with Param? When you include both north and south, it is like including both positive and negative charges together. So net charge enclosed will be zero. So electric flux would be zero. Similarly, the magnetic flux should also be zero. That is how analog works, right? So if you include lot of electric dipole, dipole moment net charge is zero. If you include thousands of the dipole moment also inside the enclosure, still net charge will be zero. So that's the reason why magnetic flux will always be equal to zero through an enclosure. Okay, write it down net magnetic flux. through an enclosure is zero. Now, uh, can you defend this logic as in 
for example, if I have a bar magnet like this, it has one pole here, one pole there, but my enclosure includes only part of it. I'm not including North Pole, including North Pole, then how come the flux should be zero? I'm including only one pole. So you can take small, small dipoles inside. Infinite, infinite dipoles inside which are aligned from south to north. Correct. So this is the when you say north and south pole, this is the net effect of dipoles. This is a net effect. When you're including a portion of it, you need to go inside and see the individual dipoles. Individual dipoles are already aligned. These aligned dipoles are creating net effect of a bar magnet, where in net net, this is the north pole and the backside is the south pole. Okay, so when you include only portion of it, you need to see how many uh, actual dipoles, which are in the form of electron spins, are getting inside. Okay, fine. I think uh, this is clear, right? Okay. All right. So we have uh, we have to start another topic now on the chapter. We'll take a break now because it, that topic will be completely different from whatever we have been discussing till now. Okay, so we'll take a break right now itself. And after the break, we will continue with uh, whatever is new. Okay. I, I don't want to take a break, starting something new for two minutes and immediately. Okay, so right now it is, no, it is not six already. It's 5.55. We'll meet after 15 minutes, 6.10. Come back after the break. Okay. I'm stopping the 